Nelson Battersby was last seen alive on Boxing Day. The two-year-old, today described as perfect and soft-natured by one family member, was found dead 14 days later. He was curled up beside the body of his 60-year-old father, Kenneth, who died of a heart attack. The toddler's cause of death was reportedly dehydration and exhaustion. Bronson was classed as vulnerable and under the care of Lincolnshire County Council's children's services, who were required to check on him twice a month. The circumstances around his death have prompted the council to launch a rapid review involving social services, police and other agencies. Social services say their last contact with Bronson's father was on the 27th of December. A home visit was arranged for January the 2nd, but there was no answer when the social worker knocked. They say she informed her manager before contacting the police. On the 4th of January, she tried again, contacting police a second time when there was no response. On January the 9th, the social worker was finally let in by the landlady. It was only then that Bronson and his father were found dead. So this is a really tra tragic incident. You know, Kenneth's had a heart attack um, and died and been unable to then provide care. Um, but to be clear, in terms of social workers, social workers would visit the family maybe once every three weeks, every four weeks. It's not something that they would be doing on a daily basis. So very sadly, uh, in these tragic circumstances, Kenneth's heart attack has resulted in uh, Bronson's death as well. So fragile was Bronson's body, his mother Sarah revealed she was unable to hold him when she went to identify the body. Speaking to the Sun newspaper, she said she hadn't seen Bronson since before Christmas after rowing with her ex-partner. If social services had done their job, she told the newspaper, Bronson would still be alive. The role of Lincolnshire Police is now also under scrutiny. The force, which has referred itself to the police watchdog, told us in a statement... Investigations have been carried out and the deaths are not being treated as suspicious. The matter has been passed to the coroner's office. We have initiated a review with partners to properly understand the chronology of these tragic events and until such a time as that review is completed, it would be inappropriate to comment further. It is hugely shocking that I think establishing uh, what happened uh, in real detail so that we can make sure it didn't happen again and listening to, of course, those calls from the family to say what could social services have done differently is important, what could the police have done differently uh, is important. The question of how a toddler who was supposed to be under the care of social services could lie undiscovered for two weeks is tonight prompting urgent questions about how vulnerable children are cared for in Britain. It's hard really to find the words to describe what's happened here in Skegness. Shocking, deeply tragic seem to be inadequate. Just a few hundred yards away are the bright flashing lights of seaside amusement arcades, a stark contrast to what happened in this ground floor flat behind me. A is leaving his two-year-old son to fend for himself. Unable to feed himself, he then tragically subsequently dies as well. Um, Neighbours living above in the flats above know nothing about what has happened until the police call at the house last Tuesday. Flowers have now been left at the door of the flat. Uh, on one note it reads, it's been a pleasure knowing you both. In reference to Kenneth Battersby it reads, we're going to miss your footy banter. And then in reference to Bronson, his two-year-old son, it says, we're going to miss your cheeky little smile. Jane Dodge there in Skegness. Well, I'm joined now by Matt Warman, who's the local MP. Matt Warman, first and foremost, this is a terrible tragedy, isn't it? It's, it's extraordinary. This is not the sort of thing that any of us imagine happening in this country in 2024. And we have got to understand how something that is clearly tragic and avoidable could have been avoided. And, and, and you talk about it being avoidable. Obviously, investigations to find out exactly how 
the authorities, the police and social services responded have already yeah. been launched, but you're in no doubt that there are systemic failures here, it would seem. I, so I don't, I don't want to say at this stage that those failures are systemic. We know from some of these things that ultimately uh, the person who was looking after a child died, and that will uh, obviously be a huge factor, but we also know that both the child and the parent, the father, were known to social services to some extent, were already within the system, if you can call it like we call it that, and therefore we can certainly say on in this occasion that uh, there was a failing there, but at the same time I can only imagine how the social workers and the police themselves must feel because this hasn't been what anyone would have wanted to ever have. And exactly what will, will need exactly. to be investigated is exactly. the gap in days between social workers arriving at the house, police being told key questions. Yes, and I, and I think it's clear that social workers made huge efforts to uh, contact multiple calls, all of that, and that the police were also informed. So what actually happened within those various communications is what's behind this tragedy to some extent. I mean, we have seen tragedies like this before. There will be question perhaps about resources. There'll also be question about cultures within authorities, but within wider society. A absolutely. Over Christmas, it doesn't appear anyone... It, it, ab absolutely. This is a story to some extent about neighbours and culture and communities as much as it is a story about uh, social services and the police. What is clear though is that uh, on the narrow point of resources there were certainly multiple visits, there was certainly uh, action from the police to some extent. We need to work out where those gaps were. It's obviously tragic, it's obviously avoidable, but it's not just about the state, it's about cultures and communities and individual human beings as well.